Welcome to the Moser on Manufacturing Podcast, brought to you by Jacket Media Co. I'm just wild about Harry, and Harry's wild about me. Good morning, everyone. This is Lou Weiss from Manufacturing Talk Radio, and here with one of my favorite guys, and everybody loves Harry, Harry Moser on Manufacturing he is the founder and president of Reshoring Initiative. Welcome back, Harry. Hi, Lou. It's great to be here, and every, everybody out there in the audience. Good, good to good to see you all again. Yeah, uh, everybody loves you, Harry. They're all waving. <laughs> okay, so today we have part two of a, a show we did about <clears throat> a month ago uh, about uh, the total cost of ownership, which gives a real good explanation to manufacturers about what they need to look at as to why they should be looking to reshore. And so, Harry, I'm going to turn this over to you. Let's let's go. Why should companies be looking to use total cost of ownership tool, which is on your website? Yeah, so t TCO Estimator is free online on the website for companies to use. And it's the most important thing we've done. It's because because companies, too many companies, big companies, OEMs, consistently buy on the basis of price instead of on, say, landed costs, would be price, duty, freight, or total cost of ownership, which would include um, uh, the uh, any quality differentials, the, the carrying cost of inventory, the travel costs to check on the on the supplier, the, the value of having manufacturing and engineering close to each other so they can work together on the product and the process. So, so all, all kinds of values like that, 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 that companies routinely ignore. So it's, it's just, it's the most important thing that I've done in, in, uh, in the reshoring initiative, maybe in my life. And, and so, so it's very essential. The, um, I'm gonna pull up one slide here, if we can get oh, it to, to do so. Uh, here we go. Let's see how that works. And share. So tell me if that. Uh, no, we we don't have. There you go. I still see me on my screen. Yep, yeah, it's here. It's there. Okay, so you can see yep. it. And yep. and so we did a survey with Plant Moran, which is one of the largest consulting and auditing companies, and. And we, the survey asked manufacturers and distributors, how do you decide whether to source something in the US or how to get it from offshore? And overwhelmingly, they said price. So they're, they're making their decisions based on price. And if it wasn't price, so you, which is the big bar, the next bar is unavailable. And, and you know, why wouldn't something be available in the United States, you know, the biggest economy in the world? Why wouldn't some of it be produced here? Why? Because the, you know, the the manufacturers of that product had been wiped out by the lower priced imports, and and therefore price indirectly had caused it. So we say that at least seventy percent of the decision to to source offshore is a price driven one, ra rather than any anything else you can think of. So 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 the TCO estimator purpose is to help the companies make a better decision, a more informed decision on that subject. And moving across the uh, the graph, corporate mandate. Okay, yeah, corporate mandate. Cor 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 corporate headquarters says you have to get it in China and and, and and or India or somewhere. And that might make sense if, <clears throat> if say the corporation is has a factory in China that's assembling things and not, and and it's ten times as big as your one in the U.S. That might make sense then to buy the the components from one source to supply the china factory and the u.s factory but but in most cases like i say pr price is the uh, is the deciding factor okay uh so how would how should a company start to use your tool okay <laughs> would they pick yeah. a pick a, a couple of parts and do the assessment on how good or bad the cost of ownership is? 
Yeah, pick a couple of parts, but not random parts. I wouldn't just reach in the bin and say, well, this one and that one. I'd look for parts that cause pain. You know, parts where where you have too much inventory, you're having quality problems, you're having delivery problems, uh, where maybe the price is going up offshore, where you have to travel to that supplier, you know, 7,000 miles away and work with them to work out something to do with the design and the process to make things work out right. So the, the ones that are keeping you up at midnight to call that foreign supplier and work out the details of something or other. You know, so so the, one, the ones that are causing pain, because if you if you don't do that, if you just pick random parts, most people can say, well, hell, the price is 30% lower. Stop screwing around, just just keep buying them over there. Another another thing, category would be parts that, that specifically that come from China or Taiwan, because there is a meaningful possibility of something happening over there, of, of some event uh, concerning China and Taiwan that could cause all, all product to stop coming from there for months or years, you don't know how long. And if, and if that would be crippling to your company, then, then that's a good kind of product to put into the mix. So, so parts that meet those kind of definitions. Uh, and then, because uh, if you're not careful and you just let the procurement people do the study, they're gonna come back to buying the least expensive part because they get bonuses based on buying the least expensive part, something called purchase price variance. And, the, uh, and, and what you really wanna do is get the input from quality control, from inventory control, from sales and marketing, from from uh, engineering, from all the other groups where quality, delivery, ease of communication make a difference, where, where they're the ones that are having to travel to the supplier and solve the problems. And they don't want to do that if they can avoid it. So, so you want to get away from siloing. You know, siloing is where each department operates independently. So I, I've had cases where I've talked to contract manufacturers, com companies like yours, that, that have gone to big OEMs and said, hey, Bill, I'd, I'd like to make some of those for you. And, I, and, and Bill says, uh, uh, well, you'd have to match the China price or the India price or the whatever. And then the salesman says, I heard you're having delivery issues and quality issues and warranty issues with, with that. And, and the buyer says, yeah, but that's not in my budget. That's in somebody else's budget. <laughs> so that's, that's not my problem. <laughs> they say, so you have to get them away from that siloing from that and, and get, get them to think about the, the, the overall need of, of the company. If you, and if you can't, if you cannot convince the purchasing procurement person to do that, then you've got to go to those other par departments and get them to speak up, get them to talk to the general manager or president and convince and ch change the objectives for the, uh, the procurement people, get them to think about the overall good of the company. I have a good analogy for you, uh, Harry. <clears throat> uh, my primary business, as you know, is uh, All Metals and Forge Group. Uh, we have a customer that we've done repeat business with. And um, the last time they went out for bid on a particular forging job, uh, we lost the job uh, because they found a new vendor on Alibaba and uh, they went with that job and that was about two months ago and this week he came back to us no bid just gave us a purchase order number for a six-figure job that and he won't talk about what happened but we clearly understand what happened and quality is a major issue you know we are iso uh, registered we're as uh, 9000 registered uh, and that speaks for itself so yeah quality is a big issue if you want to take a, a chance and i'm not saying that all products coming from overseas whether it's china or india or wherever i'm not saying that they're all bad but you have to be fortunate, you have to check them out, and you have to uh, do diligence or just reshore. Yeah. And, 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 and even if the quality, if, even if the scrap rate, you know, the, the quality problem is equal with your, your view and with the supplier from China or India, the, there's a timing difference. 
So, so if you, if you send some bad parts, they get them tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, they know they're bad. They, they come over, they pound on the table and maybe two days later, you send them some good parts. Whereas if the parts are coming in by container from China or India, and it takes them six weeks to get here, and then they open them up and they find out they're bad. Well, now they have to convince the other one to start doing it. Now they're air freighting or they're, or they're surface freighting again for six weeks so that you, you can respond much more rapidly if there's a problem than that yeah. foreign supplier can. So e even if the quality is equal, they're better off with you as a supplier. But you also have the issues uh, that occur periodically with the ports. The LA port uh, <laughs> you know, they just came to terms. Uh, they didn't go on strike this time, but they did have a slowdown. They did jam up the port system. They did jam up the ocean. There were boats parked out in the ocean. Uh, these are all things that you have to take into account. I don't know how the uh, uh, cost of uh, the total cost of ownership deals with that as a cost factor. Uh, but have you provided for that, for example, also? We don't specifically say the ports, but we but we um, use the delivery time, uh, like six weeks, eight weeks, what have you, to, uh, to calculate what, what the probable inventory level is, which determines the inventory carrying cost, which can be substantial, especially today as, as inventory rates or interest rates have been rising. So, so and, and then separately, we, we uh, have a, a, a mechanism for the user to calculate the probability that the product won't arrive, you know, for whatever reason. And then they, they look not just at the, like the air freight, but even at the, the loss of margin on the assembled product that they can't ship because they, because they don't have the component that's necessary. Right. So it's quite, quite substantial. So, so yeah. Harry, let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, if you can describe to us in, in greater detail the uh, total cost uh, of ownership estimator. Okay, so I'm going to go down to uh, here's another slide. So <clears throat> the TCO estimator, as I said, has all these has starts with the FOB or XWorks price and adds in 28 other costs and risks and quantifies them, gets them to a per piece basis, and then uh plots them so here's here's a typical output in this case the the china price was 70 and the u.s price was 100 so it's pretty easy for procurement to say well that's 30 percent difference now i'm going to buy 12,000 of those a year that's 360,000 dollars worth of purchase price variance of savings for the company of course i'll send this new product off off to china but then they did tco and, and when you consider all these 29 costs and risks, the China was now 98 and the US is 108. There's only 10% difference now instead of 30. So it's not, not so clear. And, and then going forward, assuming that the, that the Chinese wage rates keep, keep going up as they have at 10 or 15% a year and ours keep going up at two, 3% per year, then, then within a couple of years, the US TCO will be lower than the Chinese or Indian or you know, whoever it is. And, the, and therefore, hopefully the procurement person will say, huh, uh, I think I shouldn't send this new product off because I'm only gonna save 10% now and that's gonna go away in a couple of years and then I'm gonna wanna bring it back and I gotta get new tooling when I bring it back and it, it, that's not worth it. It's easier just to, just to start off with it here. And really, you know, the other products that are off there already I should be starting to think about bringing them back and finding good suppliers or hiring people and buying equipment and being ready to to produce those in in the U.S. again. So so this is the this is the the output of the of the TCO estimator and the the important very important consideration. I call this the impact of using TCO. So I took 190 cases where the user had gone in put in all the information, compared China to, to the US. And, and this price line, the blue line, is for that. The horizontal line is the China price as a percentage of US. So at 100, they're equal. Over here, China's less. So you can see the average is about 70%. But then 
switching over to total cost of ownership, including these other 28, 29 factors goes to the red line. And if there happened to be a section 301, 15% tariff, it switches to the yellow line. So what's key is down here, based on price, the US wins 8% of the time, based on total cost 32%, and with the special tariff, then 46 or 50% if it's a 25% tariff. So just by doing the math correctly, the, just a, a black and white difference between what makes sense to make here and what makes sense to buy, to buy there. And so we, you know, we, uh, my, my job is to convince companies to, to, to do the math correctly. Well, to that point, Harry, uh, have companies bought into this and have they determined that your concept is credible and uh, reliable, and yeah, what companies I, have bought into it? Yeah, not as nowhere near as many as I'd like, uh, uh, but the uh, thousands of, of users have used it, so not bad. Uh, the um, and, and they, they they call me if it doesn't work, they they email me and tell me to get it working again. You know, so 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 I know it's important to them. The uh, uh, but, but, but we'd like to see more because there's a it, it, part of the reason is, as I said, that the, the company, the people are rewarded on the basis of savings on based on price. And, and there's a lot of subjective things in the TCL, like what's the probability of, you know, of war over Taiwan? What's the what's the probability of, uh, you know, some, something happening like that, another port strike or something? That's very hard for it. For, and, and if you leave that up to the purchasing person, they can pick any number they want to, to make their bonus work out. So, so what, what companies have done, some have done, they've taken all these subjective things, they have these 29 factors and said, corporate decision, those are all co collectively worth, let's say 5%, 5% of, of FOB price. And so you're only left with quantity and uh, uh, freight cost and whether it's subject to the tariff and they're just real hard, hard kind of numbers, weight, and, and, and then and then then it's a lot easier for everybody to to, to work it out. So to, so so we, I'd like them to use the whole thing. If they don't use the whole thing, use like half of it, like I just described. And and if they don't do anything, if they don't use it at all, but they just say, hmm, we better include the tariff. Huh? What's the chance that something's going to go wrong over there, and and we're not going to get any parts? Would we survive? So if, if, if all I do is get them to think about those things and, and, and they and they put some value on it, then I feel I've accomplished a lot. Right, right. It's um, you always have to contemplate the unknown and uh, <laughs> you, you plug that in well. Uh, Harry, we're coming up uh, close to the end of our segment here. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to notably add and uh, we certainly want to get your uh, URL address and your, uh, your uh... Uh, for, for one, one of the things I never want to forget is I'm wearing my manufacturing is cool t-shirt and <laughs> and and that's to motivate uh, youth and others in America to go into manufacturing because it's a it's a wonderful career it's been great for me it's, I'm sure it's been good for you the uh, uh, some people ask me can you use the, the TCO estimator for selling? And so I have a, a favorite example of a company called Mori Corp. They're an EMS company. They make printed circuit boards out in uh, outside of Chicago. And they came to me. They were about to lose a big order. A Chinese competitor offered lower price. I worked with a VP sales. We did the TCO calculation. He showed the customer that even though Mori's price was higher, its total cost was lower. And I have a letter from him saying that was the key to winning a $60 million order. All right. Right. I'd love to help right. you, Lou, or any of our listeners win a, a $1 million order. <laughs> so, so come to me for help and you come to me at www.reshorenow.org. So reshorenow.org and you, you email me and or call me and I'd love to either hear about your successes or, or help you have more reshoring successes. I think that's a great offer, and uh, I, I would hope that some of the uh, individuals listening to us, and we're now getting to the point, Harry, with your show that we've got thousands, thousands of people listening to 
Everybody Loves Harry show. <laughs> Harry, Harry, next month, I promise you, I am going to be wearing your T-shirt with the, with the yellow tie, but it'll be a T-shirt. Okay. Uh, the, the, Harry, the, women, the women will go wild, Lou. They do. They absolutely <laughs> do. Harry, could you, could you bring back my screen? <laughs> bring back your screen. If I, you want me yeah. to stop sharing. Okay, here we go. Yeah, uh, we're done sharing. Okay, Harry, thank you very much. And we're going to see you next month with my t shirt on. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk thank, thank, thank you, Lou. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Bye. I'm just wild about Harry.